Are there two sides to every argument? Well, of course there is. However, there's something I'd like to point out today, and um, that's that I've been noticing that atheists are using one side of a two-sided argument. Almost like um, taking one argument off a shelf, using it, while at the same time putting another argument back up the shelf and not examining that argument at the same time. And I'm noticing that atheists are doing this a lot. There's a logic fallacy that I can't think of the name of right now, but it's like um, when you borrow something from somebody and return it back damaged, and then, you know, like, wh why do you return this back damaged? And then the, the guy starts listing off all these uh, ex explanations. Why? And then one doesn't coincide with the other. It's like, well, it, it wasn't damaged. And then changes the story. Well, it was damaged when I borrowed it. And then changes the story. Oh, I never borrowed it. What are you talking about? So, it, you know, if you use an excuse like that, you can't use them all together because it's like you can hear the logic failing. And this is what atheists are using and calling it logic and critical thinking. They take one argument and they use it and then if they use another argument they have to use that argument and they can't use this argument because this argument and this argument together would basically nullify each other out. And then there are other arguments where they just use one side while completely ignoring the other. And in the future I'm going to show you a few examples of this but we're going to start with one example right now to uh, kind of get the ball going here. One of my viewers brought me on to this. The video is from Cult of Dusty and it's called Phil Robinson Fantasizes About Rape and Murder of Atheists. Let's have a quick look at some of this. Phil Robertson, the guy from Doug Dynasty, you know the guy you Christians made rich and famous and you chose him as one of your leaders to come and speak at your events. Well, last Friday, you guys chose this bastion of Christian morality to come speak at one of your brunches, and there, surrounded by children and families, he had this to say. I'll make a bet with you. Two guys break into an atheist home. He has a little atheist wife and two little atheist daughters. Two guys break into his home and tie him up in a chair and gag him. And then they take his two daughters in front of him and rape both of them and then shoot them. And they take his wife and decapitate her head off in front of him. And then they can look at him and say, isn't it great to not have to worry about being judged? Isn't it great that there's nothing wrong with this? There's no right or wrong. Now is it, dude? And then you take a sharp knife and take his manhood and hold it in front of him and say, wouldn't it be something if this was something wrong with this? But you're the one that says there's no God, there's no right, there's no wrong. So we're just having fun. We're sick in the head. Have a nice day. Now here's where I'd like to point out the, uh, the difference in the arguments here. If atheism is just a lack of belief in gods, and that's it, then anybody that lacks belief in gods is an atheist. And this is why uh, atheists like using babies are atheists, and even agnostics are atheists. However, I'd like to point out a negative side to this that atheists don't like to use. They like to put it up on the shelf and not recognize that, you know, the uh, the the opposite side of the uh, argument that they want to use that they don't want to talk about they don't want to mention it and that would include the people that do bad things that are immoral that have no moral values of their own oh, oh dude there we go That's the police have the video, but they tell CNN the mugger has not yet been identified. Oh, 
There's there's tons of videos out there of people doing bad things. And obviously these people lack belief in a reward and punishment system set by a higher power. We'll call it God just for sake of argument. And if these people lack belief, they are atheists. Well, Phil Robinson, even though, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll be the first to say Phil Robinson is a few sandwiches short of a picnic, granted. But he makes a very valid point here in that atheists, these people who lack belief in God, that lack belief in a reward and punishment system after you're dead, these are atheists. What does, what does Dusty have to say about this? And after this man got through giving his speech at this brunch to your children, you all laughed and sat up and you clapped for him. That's what you Christians did. You clapped for this shit. The thing is, I'm not even pissed off. I don't give a shit. What Phil says has nothing to do with atheism and everything to do about Phil Robinson. How is that so? It has nothing to do with atheism. I just described that if a person lacks belief in a reward and punishment system, they're atheists. You, you, this, even this guy has said this on occasion, that atheists lack belief. So if there's anybody out there that lacks belief, they're atheists, even if they hold no moral values. This is a man who clearly is very disturbed. A man who sits around and thinks about raping children all day. A man who thinks about sitting around and tying you to a chair and beheading your wife in front of you and cutting your penis off. These are thoughts I've never had in my fucking life. But even weirder than that, Phil Robertson literally admits that he is a psychopath. If you listen to what he's saying, he is literally saying this. If tomorrow he wakes up and starts believing there is no God, he will rape your children in front of you, he will murder your wife in front of you, and he will cut your dick off. That is literally what he is saying. The only thing stopping him from doing the most vile shit the mind can imagine is his belief in an imaginary friend. Well, now you're just taking everything out of context here. And this goes with what I was saying in an earlier video, how atheists will acknowledge anything that favors their beliefs, but disacknowledge anything that doesn't favor their beliefs. And this is what Dusty's doing here. He's taking this and he's turning it and saying, ooh, Phil Robinson thinks about this stuff, and if he stopped believing in God, he would go out and start doing bad things. No, that's not what he said. He was using a generalization that there are atheists out there that do not fear retribution from a higher power. But Dusty can't handle this. So he has to turn it around, take everything out of context. And it's amazing that Dusty has over 4,000 thumbs ups on this and he's just you know, lying out of his teeth. Why is this? You know, we really should all saw this coming because one of the first signs to look for for psychopaths is the love for hurting and murdering animals. And this guy's made a fortune and become famous over doing exactly that, murdering animals. So to be honest, I'm not that surprised. What? Like murdering animals? Um. Did you ever eat a hamburger, Dusty? I'm pretty sure you have. Somebody had to kill that cow, so you must favor people murdering animals. Clearly, he's just trying to reverse everything, and the atheists that subbed to him just eat it up. Now I'd like to point out another aspect of this uh, two-sided argument here that they put on the shelf and forget about and that would be that uh, atheists say that hey we can be good without God well there's another aspect to that now atheists 
atheists say we can be good without a God watching over us. These are the atheists, though, that say, that, hey, look at us. Look at us. We can be good without something looking at us. A contradiction. It's a simple contradiction. Look, we don't have a God watching over us, but look! We can be good. Look! We don't have a God watching us, but look at us be good. And they are also using moral ethics set in place by Christian values. If they were using ancient Roman values, their morals would be tuned to the ethics of that time. Rome, a modern city with an ancient history. One legendary symbol of the city's turbulent and glorious past, the Colosseum. According to legend, the gladiators would be very lucky to escape from here alive, their fortunes determined by a turn of the thumb. It's, it's an argument that you do, one argument that you want to bring out and show, publicly show, and then take the other aspect of it, the other side of the argument, put it on the shelf, not have to think about it. I don't have to look at this side of the argument when I turn it around and I look at this side of the argument. 